Hi again everybody, welcome to my latest video. I'm going to go into a little more detail and up close views of how to install the front panel connectors on a motherboard. A lot of people have asked me questions about that and it's hard to see in some of the videos I've made up to this point exactly how it should be done. So I'm going to pull the motherboard out of the case. I want to transfer it over to another case anyway of my last all AMD build and I'm going to take it out and show exactly where all of the front panel connectors and miscellaneous connectors from the case would actually be going. If you enjoy this video or get anything out of it, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Okay, let me start off by actually showing page in a manual, in this case for this motherboard, the MSI B450 Tomahawk, which is the one I'm using to demonstrate this on. On page 31, the connections that you need to make for the front panel. Now they have labeled it JFP1, and they show each of the, really it's eight pins that have to be connected to a, a nine pin connector. It actually has 10, but and pin nine is reserved, which means you don't connect anything to that. However, the other eight each will have a pair of cables connected to it that are usually on the standard modern case connected to the front panel so that you can access those connections, for example, the power on and reset switch, but also see the LEDs for the power on and also hard disk access. So now looking at the motherboard, we can see that connector right here, JFP1. In addition to that, what MSI has provided is a little breakdown right here. You'd have to really use like a magnifying glass to see it, but I'll blow it up here on the video so you can. And it shows which pairs of pins go where on that set of eight pins. So let me start with that. I have the eight pins here. Generally these eight pins are labeled, so you have to make sure you can read these labels in order to understand it. So these here would be the actual eight pins and if you can see they do have written on them for what purpose they are being connected. So if you look at them you'll see that this one here at the end here says power switch. This one here says hard disk LED plus and minus. There's two little connections in there. This one here is the power LED, a separate one for plus and a separate one for minus. And then finally the reset switch, this one here. So we're going to connect them up according to the manual. I like to start with the power on switch, which according to the manual are these two pins right here, these first two. And by the way, if you ever just want to test a motherboard outside the case and it doesn't have a button, some of the more expensive motherboards will actually have a power on button that you can use. This one doesn't. Then you would take a screwdriver very carefully and shut those two pins together sort of like this. Come in here and you just put a screwdriver right in between those two pins and you short them together and it will power on. If you do it again, it will power off. Some people don't feel comfortable using the screwdriver, but if that's the case, then make sure you get that one on first. So the power switch, now there is no polarity to this one. I, however, like to make sure that I keep all of the labels in the same direction. So since there is a polarity on the hard disk LED plus to the, to the right here and negative to the left here, if you looked at it very closely, I want to have that particular one following that pattern. So with the plus on that way and the negative that way, it has to go in this direction. It would connect into these pins as such. So now that is the hard disk LED. Now the power switch itself, as I said, I usually like to do that one first. That's over here. And I like to, even though there's no polarity on a power switch, you don't see a plus or minus on it. Even though that's the case, I like to keep it in the same direction as the hard disk LED, which happens to have a polarity. So it goes into these two pins here. So this one here is the hard disk LED, which does have a polarity, and this is the power switch that does not. Now I like to tackle the one that is, for some reason, they always seem to split it up into two separate connectors. Probably would have been easier, but I guess some motherboards don't support that, and that's the power LED. And we got to get them in the same order, so plus to that direction and negative to that direction as such. And I want to plug that into where the power LED goes. Now the plus has to actually go to that side over here. So I will go ahead and plug in the plus to this one and I'll put the negative right next to it. So now I have six of the eight connected, right? These two here being the hard disk LED, these two being the power switch, and these two being the power LED. 
and the polarity doesn't matter for the LEDs. Now, if you get it wrong, you won't hurt anything, but the LED will not, will not light. So that's usually an indicator when you actually put the keys together that you may have those wrong. So I will go ahead and pull this one out. This one should be the plus. And sure enough, there's a little plus sign right there that says it is. So I'll put that one back in where it belongs. And then finally, the reset switch, which is like the power switch, there is no polarity to it. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and plug that one in again. I like to orient it the same way and plug it in. Oops, I went off by one. That reserve pin should stay blank. This little pin here should not be used, the one at the end. That is labeled in the manual as pin 9. And that connect all eight of those wires. Those are the hardest ones to have to deal with, really. I like to use these little speakers. And if your case comes with them, it usually comes with the case. It says speaker on it. If you look at the manual, that actually goes in the connector right next to it or right above it called JFP2. That's this one that's right here. So it's this one right here. There's four pins right here. Now, it has different pin configuration, whether you're using a buzzer or a speaker. This is considered a little speaker. I haven't tried speaking anything through one of these, but that's what it's considered because the pins are the opposite end of it with two blanks in the middle. Polarity does matter on this. And if you look very, very carefully at the, uh, at the speaker connector, you will see the polarity listed. And what it says is really carefully is that that one is the plus and that one's the minus. It's hard to see. So what I usually do is I look on the opposite side. You see a little arrow right here on one pin. Well, that is the plus. Just like with the RGB, that little arrow means 12 volts. It means, it means plus here. Now the plus has to go all the way to the opposite end. So if you put the four pins in this way, it would go in as such. And there you go. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that here, um, even after I get ready to put it back in a case. Now the remaining cables, let me now show you on the screen here, the USB. This particular motherboard has two of those connectors. They are also 10 pin connectors with one pin missing, pin nine in this case. So the pin nine is the one that's blank and they appear in this, mo in this one as this one and this one. And one is called a USB one and one is called a USB two. USB numbers associated with these if you're interested. It doesn't really matter. Generally, most cases only have one of these. So if you look at the cable that is for this, here's one right here. It actually says on it USB. And if you look very carefully at the pins, one of them is not available to you. It's sealed up. So what you've got to do with that one, you've got to make sure that that's on the blank pin. So I'm going to go ahead and put them into the first one, USB 1. The blank pin is all the way over here on this side. So i got to make sure that I orient it to, so that the blank pin can connect up to this. If you feel resistance, don't continue because that means you may not have the blank pin in the right space. And you push this down into there and you have it. Now if you have a second connector, which some very large cases may have because they have a lot of USB ports on the case, that's why you would have this USB 2. So this motherboard actually supports quite a few USB connectors. Now that's USB 2.0 by the way, 2.0. It's a different connector for the USB 3. Let me go to that page on the screen. Actually USB 3.1. This one has a unique cable to it. In general, most cases have it with the blue tip to it as such. Now, there happens to be a little key to it on this side. If you look very carefully, there's a key here. And it has usually has two cables because this one cable has two USB 3.1 connectors that it is connecting to on the case. And that will go all the way over to this connector way over here. And it also has a key in it if you look very carefully at the socket. So the key is on this side in the socket. Here's the key on the cable. You've got to match them up and plug it in. This one you have to give it a little bit of force to get it down in place. Not too much. And then that covers all but one cable connector. The last one that most cases have is all the way at the other side. Let me get over to it. This is pretty standard with most motherboards. It's one that says J-A-U-D-1. So I have that page up on the screen now. It's the last connector all the way over to the right. That's very common with most motherboards that you'll see it there. And it again is a pin, a cable connector that has 10 
connectors to it. However, if you look very carefully at it, there is a missing pin, but a different missing pin. The missing pin is on this top row between these two on the right. So it's not the end one, it's the one next to the end one. And if you look at the Catrol cable connector, it has the same limitation. It has a blank at that point. You cannot push pin through that because they got it covered up. Now what I had says on it, just to double check, it usually says HD audio. So if you look very carefully at that, you should see HD audio. Fortunately, it's not put in white so you can't see it as clearly as some cases do but make sure that the blank is in this case make sure it's all the way at the top and it goes where the missing pin is and you push it all the way down now a couple of other cables you may want to connect depending on your motherboard for example I showed you this before on this motherboard and let me show you to you here it's called JRGB1 let me go to it on the manual page here and this is usually meant for something that is a daisy chained RGB which I happen to have here this is the one that is actually connected to the fan for the CPU the cooler for the CPU again make sure you find that little arrow that arrow points to the 12 volts so make sure you can see that and then you'll see here written on the motherboard one of them says plus 12 or 12 V make sure you orient the arrow to follow that and then push it in and then finally as long as it's in the same vicinity of the other pins let me show you what you may have too if you happen to have SATA connectors this particular motherboard has two SATA connectors right here at the end SATA 2 and SATA 1 they're right at the bottom of it I have a SATA cable here I like to get the ones that lock in place with this little latch usually it is stainless steel like this and you make sure that you have the key right there's an L-shaped key inside the connector make sure you can see that and then you can see the L-shaped piece of plastic in the center of the connector here as well so if you wanted to connect it let me put it to first one number one it would go in this way and I'll put the mic close so you can hear what happens here locked in place so those are the front panel connectors and miscellaneous other connectors as well I've, I've covered this entire row of cables that are at the bottom of the motherboard and they are at the bottom of most modern motherboard that you will encounter that completes this video on how to install the front panel connectors onto a motherboard during a computer build I really do hope you got something out of it and if you did or just enjoyed it in any way please once again do me a favor subscribe to my channel my head will pop up here in a moment click on it follow along and subscribe it doesn't cost anything to subscribe so please it'll help a lot and thanks for watching